I'm at the US Amateur this week and while tournaments can be a lot of work, when the weather is nice, there's some downtime. There's even time for some cart rides. What do you think, Chris? Should we take a cart ride and look at some grass? Let's go take a ride. I was here for the Ryder Cup, the KPMG Women's PGA Championship, and now the US Amateur Championship. So I've seen over the past eight years, the way you've managed the grass is a little bit different. And I know you've written about that on your Substack. I wonder, could you just share what that is? What, what do you feel the differences are as the maintenance has evolved over the past eight years? Yeah, this might be a little aggressive to say it this way, but I feel like it, when we did the Ryder Cup here eight years ago, that the way I was managing the grass was a little bit like I was guessing. I was guessing that an amount of sand was the right amount of sand to apply. I was guessing that an amount of nitrogen was the right amount of nitrogen to apply. I was guessing about a lot of the ways we were doing things. And in that particular event, the conditions were really good because, um, you know, if you do those things and then you stop doing them for some period of time, the grass probably is going to be pretty good. But what I found was that our membership just didn't like all the things we did to get to that point in that particular year. And so over the years since, 2019 was the KPMG and now 2024, I've really tried to learn a lot and focus in on really learning and knowing what we're doing and knowing do we need to do that or is it just something that seems like the right thing to do or is part of some um, you know rote schedule that we've laid out to top dress X amount of times and apply X amount of you know fertilizer nitrogen fertilizer um, so I think that's the biggest difference is it, I really feel like I know exactly why we're doing what we're doing and how much needs to be done this is Kentucky bluegrass rough and we can see the, the tips are maybe just just touching the 20 oh. centimeters. So the tips would be at 8 inches. Yep. Yeah, because uh, 100 millimeters. So it's grown. When was the last time this uh, was mowed? Wednesday. We mowed this last Wednesday, one week ago today. Okay. All right, so the roughs are poa pretensis. Any yep. tall fescue in there? Uh, there is some tall fescue. This is in a particular, you maybe see a little few coarser blades here, so there's a little tall fescue in here. In some places there'll be more, but it's predominantly poa pretensis. Okay. Then we move into the the intermediate cut here, which is again, almost exclusively poa pretensis. And this would be an inch and a half, or here we see about, let's say mowed at three and a half to four centimeters. Mm -hmm. And we mow this every day. Okay. Moving over here, we have um, creeping bentgrass collars. These are mowed at a quarter inch. This is the same as the fairway. Um, the fairways are a little bit higher than this, but essentially the fairways are very similar to, to this. Um, again, all keep creeping bent grass. And then finally to the putting surface. Again, uh, the cultivar is A4 creeping bent grass here. And these are mowed at um, 110 thousandths of an inch. Sorry, it's been which, a, long, a long week of tournament prep. Which is 2.8 millimeters. 2.8 millimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, one tenth, one, uh, 110 thousandths of an inch. And we mow these with smooth rollers. You do that all through the summer? Generally, yes. We will put some groove rollers on this. That's, that's, and we just get a little bit more bite. We'll keep the same height of cut. And then sometimes if we feel like there's a little, it's getting a little leggy or we need to clean it up, we'll put groove rollers on and let that just bite into the turf a little bit and it, it cleans them up pretty nice. Chris, you're well known perhaps most well known as the inventor of the now world famous OM246 hashtag. Just a couple of days ago, you came up with another one, not on your own, but as part of a collaborative effort, perhaps helped by ChatGPT, <laughs> with what we're calling Turf GVX, growth versus expected. You've been using this for a while. Can you explain what that is, how you're so good at coming up with hashtags, and why this is something that people could put to use? I'm not sure why I'd be good at coming up with 
hashtags. Maybe it's hereditary. My sister's a content creator, and so uh, she's she's good at that sort of thing. So maybe I have a little bit of that in my blood. But we did come up with that. And growth versus expected is is really sort of this new uh, lingo that we've now we're you're, you're sort of unleashing uh, for the turf the turf speedo or the growth growth ratio. And the idea is that there's an expected amount of growth that comes from or that you would typically have because of the weather. And then there's the actual amount of growth that you have. And you put them into a formula and it turns it into the GVX, which is the growth rate versus the expected growth rate. And we've been using that for two years here at Hazeltine. And what it's allowed us to do is really dial in these surfaces to get the exact growth rate that we want to produce the types of conditions that we want to have. And what it's done is it's allowed us to do things like reduce our amount of top dressing. We're not growing that much grass, so we don't have to apply top dressing to dilute any organic matter or really you know, smooth out the surface that is continually growing on the top. So it, it allows us to just have a consistent grass surface no sand affecting the ball roll, no sand interfering with anything with the rollers, most of all, to me, with the rollers. I mean, we have, you know, we're here at sort of at the peak or towards the end of the peak of what would be the summer stress period here in Minnesota. And we have no impact to the collars, to the edges of greens. And that, to me, is largely because we're, we're not applying sand during the course of the year and we're not having that abrasive nature right there at the surface. And we're doing that, what's allowing us to do that is the growth, analyzing the, the formerly the growth ratio, the turf speedo, now what we're calling the GVX. Yes, and hopefully this is the last time we have to change the name. And I thank you for your help in coming up with the GVX. Well, there was a, well, Jason Haynes came up with the speedo and Jason's a Canadian and, and, and Canadians and, and Brits tend to refer to the speedometer on the car as a speedo and they sort of know that I think to the rest of the world it's a little bit of it's a little too descriptive so um, a, a new name seems to be the right thing to do. You mentioned the GVX and how that's helped you to put less sand. How much top dressing did you put this year? We haven't put any down this year. Last time these greens were top dressed was October of 2023, so last fall before our winter, and we put down two millimeters of sand. Okay, so that's uh, less than standard, probably. Less than you've done in the past, for the it most is, part? It is less than we've done in the past. And we had, uh, the previous winter, I felt like it was too, we had put down too much, and it just took us a little bit too long to get going in the spring. We had sand hanging around for too long. Plus, we had airified last August, and we put down a, a good amount of sand with that airification. So some people ask how many rounds you get. Um, can, you, can you explain how busy this course is? Yeah, 23 to 24,000 rounds in a, in a seven-month golf season. So it's basically like a 50,000 to maybe 55,000 rounds if it was a 12-month season? It was a 12-month season, yeah. Okay. And you're able to do that with two millimeters of sand yeah. last year. I mean, so far, look, we're always looking, we're always testing our organic matter. And and if we feel like, or if our numbers show that we need to do more, then we'll do more. But right now, these surfaces are very good. And as I mentioned earlier, the edges, um, you know, this is, a, this is a problem I struggled with, as I know many golf courses struggle with, is even collar decline throughout the course of the season. This is the back of our 16th green, and this green is often rolled in this direction, so you have a roller that's coming up to this point and stopping and going the other direction. And this is a place where we would see some, some definite deterioration, especially around this time of the year, at the end of this, the, this stressful summer months. But you can see there really isn't any of that here at all. I mean, it, it's, it's, this green's in wonderful condition. It's perfect grass, edge to edge, and uh, you know, I really believe that that comes um, not from continuously applying top dressing, but applying top dressing, then letting the grass grow up and letting it be just a nice, good grass surface throughout the, the season. Am I supposed to look like I'm driving? Are we pretending that yeah, we're driving? Yeah, it's a cart ride. It's a car. Oh, okay, I'll say car.
Okay. Well, Chris, thank you so much for the car ride. I really learned a lot. <laughs> Appreciate it. Where, where did we go? I don't know. One of my favorite things about working at tournaments is doing really important jobs and operating very expensive equipment while being extremely sleep deprived. <laughs> You know, you're really, uh, you're really highlighting the safety of all these tournaments, the safety factor. <laughs> I hope nobody from OSHA is watching this. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you're measuring the rough? Uh, yes, this is Kentucky bluegrass rough predominantly. What are you and measuring? Start I'm measuring the rough. Start on the zero. Well, what do you mean? Well, this isn't this is in centimeters, so I was confused. <laughs> Come on, okay. We'll, we should delete that part. No, no. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So.